don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So it's that time in the month when it's time for a brand new mid-month mini mission inspiration. In fact, the first one for 2021. So this year um, we're changing up the uh, format a little bit just to keep it a little bit fresh. So this year we're working from little inspiration cards. So I'll turn over to my overhead camera and show you what I'm going to create using the new art tag kit. Before I get started on creating my art tag for January using January's prompt, I just want to have a little chat about the tag, um, tag journal kit that I've been selling. So as you can see, this is the kit that I've been selling. Um, when they come to me, they've got this white kind of opaque, semi translucent -y protective cover on both sides. Now to get it to look as clear as this, you have to remove this white film from the actual plastic. And all you have to do is just take either your nail or the point of a, um, a needle or a pair of scissors, just very, very gently, just catch the end. Because it's all being cut by a laser, um, it looks as though it, you've been sent a, a white one but it does take a little bit of a while to just be able to get through it and then once you're actually in and underneath the protective cover there you go it just peels off but there is one on both sides or it should be one on both sides and it doesn't look like there's one on both sides but there is Again, it just takes a little bit of time just to kind of scratch underneath it and then pull it off. There you go. So there is a cover on both sides of your tag. One side might look as though it hasn't got anything on, but it actually has. Once you've removed your protective cover, you've got that total clear acrylic cover as well as your MDF one. So I just wanted to show that, um, removing the film, that's what you need to do. I've not sent you a piece of white plastic, it is the protective cover. It does actually say so on there, look. Remember your acrylic tag has protective covers which you will need to remove before use. I know it sounds as though um, I'm teaching you how to suck eggs, but trust me I've had a few comments from people saying I thought it was going to be clear. So I just wanted to go through that before we started. Okay, so Using my tag journal, so I've added a little lobster claw to mine so I can hang it up easier. Um, I've also just put a smaller book ring in just to start off with um, until I've got two or three months in, then I'll move into a larger one. But you know, that's just personal preference. So I've used my tag cover to go around my uh, piece of dog biscuit box because it's the nice thick craft card which I've usually used. I save all these boxes and cut them up to make tags out of and I've used that to create my template. You can see I had a couple of goes um, just at getting the right edge on it. I went too close to the side <laughs> but I've got it now. Anyway so there's my tag that I've cut out. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to cover the back, get rid of this bit. So I've gone into my collection of uh, 12 by 12 papers and I've pulled out this old sheet of, I think it's a Graphic 45 one, um, Sweet Sentiments or something like that, very old one. Um, but I'm going for the back. I like the colour on the back, that kind of bluey, kind of duck eggy, Odin-Nil kind of colour. Um, so I'm going to glue that onto the back first of all because otherwise I normally forget. So let me go grab my glue and I'll put my protective mat down and I'll meet you back here in a second or two. Okay, so I've got my tag, I've got my protective mat down and I've got the paper that I want to use. That's obviously going to get stuck down on there so that I have that lovely pattern on the back. So I'm just going to grab my um, Elmer's glue. This is the purple stuff. This is the stuff that goes on purple and then dries 
really, really clear. I'm just going to add it to the back of the tag. Make sure I get plenty on. Okay, that should do me. And then I can lay that over the tag. Give it a push down. We've got a little bit of wiggle room on this. There we go. Just give it a bit of a push down and then make sure it's all lined up. And then I can leave that for a minute or two just to grab and then I'll be back. Okay so my papers had sufficient time to dry on the back of the tag. I just want to mark the position for the hole on the front of that tag first of all. So I'm just going to drop the MDF back, grab a pencil and then just go through the hole just to mark where I need to puncture later on. I can now flip it over and then trim off the excess paper from around the tag. So I'll just swap over with my mats because I don't want to cut on my non-stick one. And then he says, trying to find a scalpel or a craft knife and can't. It's because they're all over on my other desk. There we go, that's better. It was over in the west wing. Okay, so I should just line that up with the card and then we can just quickly trim that off. So I'm pushing the blade up to the cardboard and then lining the straight edge, the ruler, a couple of times, just light strokes. And then I've got a little bit of excess on the sides because I didn't cut the paper to the exact size when I took it from the pad. So I'll just quickly run the scalpel down there just to trim off that excess. And then do the same at this side. Just taking the smallest amounts off. And that should do me for the tag. And of course, I'll just need to round off the top just because. There we go. That looks better. Okay, now I can tackle the front. So First things first, so our prompt is secrets. So as I said in the introduction on the Facebook group, um, this one, you can include a secret somewhere or do secret journaling or use the entire theme for secrets to put in there um, a secret that you might have about somebody or a secret desire for somebody or a secret desire to do something like paragliding or selling on the world or whatever, just a secret that you've not really told many people or want to bury, something that you may have done that you're not particularly proud of, that you might want to bury and use this as a kind of cathartic exercise. So I've got my little secret that I've written down on a piece of paper here. I've got a little envelope that I'm going to pop it inside and then I'm going to stick that down. So excuse me, uh, so lick and stick so my envelope is now safely inside the my secret is now safely inside the envelope I'm going to get some glue and I'm now going to just add some glue on the seal side of the envelope just add a little bit all the way around close to those corners 
then I'm going to flip the envelope over and I'm going to stick that down on the base of my card. So my secret is inside the envelope and there's now no way to get inside the envelope so it's sealed, hidden. Not even Indiana Jones would be able to get his way in there. <laughs> sealed forever, never to be seen. Only I will know what's in there. Okay. So I'm going to leave that for a minute or two and then I'll be back once that's dry. My envelope is now stuck down quite nicely to my background so I'm going to try and um, add a layer of colour over the top of this now. So because we've got that lovely kind of duck eggy kind of tealy colour on one side my base colour is going to be kind of blue so I've got Dina Wakely Marine which is kind of like a, a darkish blue I've then got Dina Wakely Peacock and then I've got the lighter colour Turquoise so I'm going to start off with adding some of that marine paint to the background. I haven't added any gesso or anything onto the background of this so I want it to soak in. There we go. And these are fairly heavy body paint. So we'll start just by adding that dark into the background. I'm going to try and get underneath so that we don't have any of that um, or the, the join if you like is kind of disguised as much as possible. I'm going to go all the way over the tag I'm holding it down with my fingers because if I move it too much I'm going to get paint on the other side because I've already covered the reverse of the tag. So if you don't want that to happen or you don't feel as though you might be able to keep it in one place you might want to stick your background down at the end or last. It is moving a little bit but not enough for me to be worried. Kind of being or disappearing under that paint. And then just have that last little bit of paint down there. And that should now, he says, hoping he's not got much paint on the other side, just a little bit maybe, but that's fine. Just give it a little bit of a rub. Okay. There's my first coat. So I can just go around, cover some of those areas that look a little bit lighter than others. But while it's still wet, I'm going to grab that other colour. This is the peacock. And then I can start to add some of that colour in. top, just scraping the brush down okay okay I'm happy with that so that will dry just a tad darker So we've got that dark in the background and that lighter blue over the top and once again before that dries, let's pop the lids back on those, before that dries I'm going to grab that lighter turquoise colour and then 
using the same brush, pick up some of that lighter colour and then start going over some of the other areas. Just a bit at the top. Great for doing while it's still wet because you can really get that kind of distressed painterly kind of look. Okay, I'm going to just let that sit for a second, clean off my brush, I'll get this cleaned up. So we'll start again with a clean work surface and then I'll be right back. Okay, so the blue background is sufficiently dry. It's got some real nice colour to it. Um, I've dragged out of my collection some a couple of pieces or a few bits and bobs of Tim Holtz uh, ephemera. Um, those two pieces there are from one of the ephemera kits. These are stamps that I've also got the die set for, which is I think the ticket booth set. So I'm going to include those in there as well. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add these into the background. So I'm going to start adding them onto the tag like so, um, which will also disguise the envelope. So again, I'm just going to use some wet glue. So I'll put some across the top. I've gone around the edges with um, Distress Ink. as well, just to get rid of some of those edges. So I'm going to take that right up to the corner, put that there like so, and then I'll take this piece and put it about there. So we've got glue on there like that. So we'll add that about there. And then I think I'll probably add that ticket piece just towards the top. I might not use that one. Probably won't use that one. Bit of glue there. just to hold it down and then I'll stick that at the top up there. Okay so we need a little bit of drying time so again put a bit of weight on that just to hold it down just so that it's not going to go anywhere. Maybe use a heavy bottle or something. There we go that's probably going to do it that there. What else have we got? Something heavy there. Perfect. Okay, I'll let that sit for a minute or two and then I'll be right back. Okay, so they're pretty much stuck down now. So I want to add um, something else over the top of there. So part of my journey this year is to include uh, more personal elements into my art journaling um, in whichever of my um, journals I end up working in, whether it's for the Mission Inspiration one or whether it's just one of my other ongoing journals. So the way, best way to do that is to include photographs of yourself. So I've cut this one out, which is an appropriate size, which I took earlier on today, uh, printed it off on the computer and just cut it out. And that's going to go on the front of my, um, my journal card, but, the background for that, I just want to knock back a little bit before I stick those on. So to do that, I'm going to get um, some white gesso. And I've got some Dina Wakely white gesso here. Oh, which was a Christmas present because I'd almost run out. And I've got 
little brush. And although I've got some of that distress ink on my mat now, when I put this down, it's going to pick up the colour in that gesso. So it's going to be a little bit off white. And then I'm going to just drag that white paint just over the top. And it has mixed just slightly with that distress ink the vintage photo, which is taking it a little bit off white, which is exactly what I wanted to do. And then just dragging my brush over the top, which is going to knock back those images into the background. You'll still be able to see them, but it just adds that kind of layer on top of distress and kind of grunge. Just kind of helps to knock it all, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Unify, that's the word I'm looking for. It helps to all unify it. Okay, so I'll need just to clear this up, get this dried off and then I'll be right back. Okay, so the tag's dried and you can see that it's all, it's pushed a lot of that detail into the background. You can still see it, but it has kind of helped just to kind of give it that grunginess that I wanted. So I've now got my photograph, which I've already gone round with the Distress Ink, which you've already seen. So I'll grab some glue. I think a lot of people um, don't include photographs of themselves or their family members into their art journal pages because the, there's this thing about vanity um, which is fine I mean art journaling is a personal process so it's okay to create pages just for you that you're not going to show anybody I do it all the time and um, what you guys see isn't necessarily everything that I do. I do create art journal pages and projects just for me. I have art journals that never see the public light of day at all. And I've got art journals on the go that you've never seen because there are bits and pieces in there that I don't want other people to see because they contain personal things you know, thoughts and feelings and fears and, and all that kind of stuff. So if I've got something on my mind that I need to get off my chest, that's where I put it, into my art journal. So it's okay to use self-imagery. It's not a vanity thing. The whole process of art journaling can be one of catharsis, if you like, and I keep using that word. Um, in its true sense of the word, means to purge, to get rid of. So you can do it to get rid of those negative feelings if you want to. It's not a bad thing at all. So give yourself permission to express yourself in whatever way that you want to. Um, a few years ago, I... Um, spoke to a lady who said she has a journal which is just full of bad language. <laughs> F words and C words and, and you name it. Um, and that's the journal that she puts her anger into. So it's bound to have lots of, um, lots of words like that in it. And that's okay. Go ahead and do it if it helps. <laughs> you know, I'd rather you shout into the pages of your journal than at your kids or your husband or your wife. You know what I mean? Right, okay, so one other thing to do. Now I want to add a little bit of um, typography into this. So I've gone through my collection of Tim Holtz. I'm sure these are Tim Holtz, kind of like ransom letters. Um, I'm sure they are Tim Holtz. If they're not, please let me know. And I'm going to add onto the back some glue, just a little bit, just a little dollop 
and then across the bottom I'm going to arrange these hopefully I'll get them all in let's just do a dry run first just to hopefully make sure see I'm just pushing them along mm, might have to lose the, the other the other S but I think that's probably just going to fit right across the bottom which is fine okay so at least we've got our starting point so we've got our glue on there so if I just move that across a little bit I'm only putting one little dot so let's just bring it oh, it's already started to grab now so that's fine and I'm going to put them straight on I'm not going to put them at kitty corner angles or anything like that because you haven't really got the room to be able to do that or I haven't got the room to be able to do that but that's okay you could always cut these letters out of whatever you've got books magazines if you haven't got anything like this or if you've got a computer just do them on your computer have a little bit of wiggle room just to maneuver the letters a tad Here we go. <laughs> so we haven't got room for that with a little s that's fine okay so once again I'm just gonna let that sit and grab and then I'll be back when they're dry so those letters are pretty dry now, so dry enough for me to be able to work on the rest of the tag without damaging it. So what I want to do now is that I've already punched through my hole for the, the ring, but I want to put some reinforcement rings around there. So do you remember when I said I wasn't going to use this ticket? Well, I am. I've changed my mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop hole there and then I'm going to line the largest circle around that smaller hole and then punch through. That way it's going to give me a hole or reinforcement hole that I've created there we go. So I've now got two hole reinforcers. So they're not punched very well, but hey ho. It's obviously an old punch. I'll just go around the edge. Let's get a pencil and just push that through. That's it. That's better. So that's one. Punch that through. See, if you use the point of a pencil to push through your hole, it's going to travel in and stop at the width of the hole. You can just run your pencil around and it'll just smooth off those edges. So let's quickly go around it with that distress ink. Mm. 
Okay, and now we can glue those on. In fact, let me see if I've got an emery board. There we go. I might just file the back of that paper just to get rid of that bump where it's punched through, not quite. This uh, hole punch of mine is obviously not as sharp as it used to be. <gasps> a bit like me, really. <laughs> Certainly not as sharp as it used to be. That's better. said about, uh, about most people I think as you get older We're definitely not as sharp as we used to be guys you can either use wet or dry or whatever glue takes your fancy glue stick precision glue Tombow glue you name it whatever you want Stick that on one side, hopefully, there we go, just line that up, and then we'll do that side. I'm hoping my camera's behaving itself, I had some autofocus issues recently with it, where it decided to not work properly after all this time and you're saying that's only about a year or two old because this is my second camera the first one went faulty about just over just over oh, just under two years ago there we go Cool. that will do I'm happy with that like that like those bits and then so on the back we will stick on our card for the mission inspiration just so we know what the project was I'll show you something in a second I don't think I've opened the hole in that far enough that's better no wonder I was struggling I wasn't letting enough glue through Now on the card, if you've downloaded it from the Mission Inspiration Facebook group, where you can find this, obviously there will be a clickable link in the description area below. That's also the address. Um, there's a, like a little sticker on the top, or a little space on the top, and that's where you can put the date. So today's date is Saturday the 16th of January. So here in Europe we put the day first, followed by the month. There we go. So that tells me that's for January. And what day I've done it. It says 21 in there already. So you could have just put 16th Jan if you'd have wanted. Or if I'd have wanted. But anyway, that I think is my mission inspiration art tag for January 2021. I will eventually get round to decorating the back on this. I just haven't had the time just yet. What with doing all the extra um, filming for um, the new cookery channel, the Steam Kitchen, which if you're watching this has gone live at the same time. So there you go. There is my January mission inspiration at tag for the word secret. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me do that. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.
get move that out of the way so you don't get the glare. <laughs> I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.